Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the operation of a smart valve in a gas furnace. So this can be used for natural gas or propane, and this one's actually being converted to LP, which is propane. But what I want to show you is there's several types of smart valves, and this one is a direct ignition type of uh, smart valve, and this one is a pilot ignition smart valve. And so this is what we're going over today, and it's the most common that you end up finding in the field. And so what you have is you have your, your three wire right here for your ignition, which is up here. And so you have a 24 volt hot surface igniter, which is this small one here. Then you have a flame rod, a small flame rod, and the flame rod has this black wire on it. And so this gas valve is actually controlling the ignition. So this has a, a control board mounted on top of the gas valve. Some furnaces have an ignition control module and that takes care of the ignition process. But that's not needed with this gas valve because it's all contained up here on the top. Also, other gas furnaces have a integrated furnace control board and this control board is what takes care of the ignition process. So I just wanna take you through what each of these wires, uh, what, what their, their purpose is and their connection on the smart valve. And so you can see that we have a pressure switch here and a pressure switch back there. This is a 90% efficient gas furnace. And you can tell that because it has PVC exhaust. And so you see this blue wire here is actually attached to that pressure switch. And then you have a, a wire going from that pressure switch over to this pressure switch. And then you have this wire going down to the control board down underneath. The purpose of this pressure switch right here is to make sure that the inducer motor is running and it's pushing the exhaust out and that there's no clogs in the exhaust pipe and that it actually has the correct uh, pressure pulling the, the exhaust flame through through the whole heat exchanger. So that's the purpose rate of, of this one right here. This one is to make sure that the condensate trap below this inducer motor, but it's mounted on the housing down below, it's making sure that the condensate trap is not clogged. So you gotta remember that when a furnace uh, has combustion occurring, you're gonna have water as a byproduct of the flame. So you need to be able to trap that down in the trap and this is making sure that it's not overflowing into, basically rising up into your inducer motor housing. Now we have an up close view of our smart valve and we can also see our pressure switches. We have our probes for our multimeter right in the black and white terminal of this plug. And you see that we're reading 28 volts. So it's 27.8 volts. Anytime that you have power to your furnace, your black wire is your hot and your white wire is your common. So you're gonna read 28 volts. You could take your, your probe out right here and measure it on any ground on the furnace. You're gonna measure the same power right here. You have 28 volts coming into the smart valve. Now, the thing is you're not going to have power come into the smart valve on the blue wire, which will start start the igniters. So you're not gonna have that until those pressure switches close. So the first thing that's gonna happen in the sequence of operation for heat is that your inducer motor down here, it, what that's gonna do is it's gonna turn on and your, your pressure switches are gonna prove that the inducer motor's working, that the condensate trap is not clogged, and then power is gonna be going through those pressure switches over to right here on the plug. So this is just four wires on this plug that you can see. So once, once both this black wire right here and now the, the blue wire have power, both of those have power, you're going to have your igniter turn cherry red up here. And so what's gonna happen at your igniter is you're gonna allow your 24 volts onto the hot surface igniter, it's gonna turn cherry red. And then what's gonna happen is this gas valve is going to allow the pilot gas to flow through this pilot tube and then you're going to ignite your flame. What's also happening is you're sending alternating current through this black wire to the flame rod and you're proving that the flame is present there due to the flame rectification process. And in this case, this pilot tube is the ground. So I don't wanna get into the whole flame rectification process right now, uh, but the circuit is completed between this black wire and this pilot tube on a smart valve. And you can check out other videos on flame rectification down in the description section below. Right now we're looking into the combustion chamber and you see one, two, three burner tubes. And a burner tube looks just like this at its, at its head right here. And this is where your orifice is right there. And so what you're gonna have is right between these two, you're gonna have this, this pilot flame. 
And so this is the pilot termination head. And so that's the pilot tube right here. And you have your 24 volt hot surface igniter here. And you also have your flame rod. Now that flame rod right here is not touching anything. And so you have alternating current on that flame rod. And when you have a flame between this pilot head and the, the rod right here, the alternating current that's present on the rod uh, ends up getting rectified through the flame and then you have direct current coming back on this ground basically this this pilot tube back to the gas valve and so that's your flame proving process once there's a flame there then and once it's proved your smart valve allows the main burners to turn on and allows the full gas flow th flowing through here and that's what ignites your main burners so that's how it works up here We're now down in the blower compartment and I brought our wire down from the smart valves just so you can see. But basically what we're connecting to on the board is right here on these wires. And so you have your black is your, is your power all the time to the smart valve. And then you have your white wire right here. That's your common. Your blue wire, that right there is when you are calling for heat over on the thermostat terminals right here. And I'll discuss that in a second. Anytime that's, you're calling for heat, you're going to be uh, sending out 24 volt power through this wire, through the pressure switches, and to this plug. So if the pressure switches are closed because the inducer motor is working properly, you're going to have the power needed for the smart valve to operate. So after that occurs, then what's going to happen is you're going to then have power brought back to the control board down here from the smart valve. And that's what's going to signal this control board to start the blower on delay. So it's waiting for the heat exchanger to warm up. And then that blower motor is going to turn on and, and push air across the heat exchanger in order to, to heat the building. I also want to point out that these two red wires right here, you have uh, that those right there are safety wires. So what you're doing is you're sending 24 volt power through safety switches, such as this is a high temperature limit switch. And this goes in the heat exchanger area. And... Then you also have a flame rollout switch. So this is in the combustion area. So, so those are safety sensors. So if those open up, it's going to, to stop the uh, main burners from being able to continue to, to heat the heat exchanger. So it's going to cut off power to this, this blue wire. That's what's going to happen anytime that these that the, uh, the power comes out from one of these red wires and it comes back. But if it does not come back, that means that the safety device has tripped and you will no longer have power on this blue wire to the smart valve. Now down at the bottom right here, you have your thermostat wires. So you have your R terminal, which is actually your, your red wire right here, your W terminal, which is your white wire, your Y terminal, which is your yellow, which right now, as you can see, we don't have our outdoor air conditioning uh, condenser wired in. So we don't really need this yellow wire here, but anyway, then you have your, your G, which is your green wire, and then also your common, which is your blue wire. Well, over here you have your R and W. So R sends power out to the thermostat. Anytime the thermostat's calling for heat, R and W touch, and then power is brought back onto the W right here. So it's basically just like jumpering from R to, to W. And that's what's going to turn heat on. So now that we're at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just turn it on at the thermostat. So we're going to have 24 volts connected from R to W, and we're going to go ahead and start our sequence of operation for heat. Right now we have power on to the furnace, and we're going to have 24 volts between the R and the common. And so that's displayed on the multimeter between R and C as 27 or right about 28 volts. Now, if we were calling for heat to turn on, we would have power between W and common, which we don't right now. So now let's go ahead and turn the heat on at the thermostat. And now you see 27 volts. So now we're gonna go ahead and move up and look at the, the inducer and up at the, uh, the smart valve. So now we're up top and we are not calling for heat right now. And we have one probe in the common for our multimeter and our multimeter set on voltage and we have our other alligator clip right on the pressure switch wire. So as you can see, this is the wire. So it would be the same thing as if we had the probe right in this plug right here, but it's just easier for me to get access to it right here. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the heat by connecting the R to the W wire in the thermostat and let's get started.
So there you see 27 volts right there. But what I want to do is I'm going to just shut off the, the pressure switch down below. You can see now we, we lose our power to the smart valve. And that's because if a pressure switch is in the open position, it's saying that there's a problem. So now we're reconnected down below on the other pressure switch. And now what's going to happen is we are sending our power to our hot surface igniter through these two blue wires. So now we're going to back up. I want to show you what it looks like when we have our burners ignited. So we've stopped the heat sequence. We're going to turn the thermostat on again, but I don't want to overcomplicate this, but I want you to be able to see uh, the, the power on the orange wire. So this meter right here is measuring between the orange wire and the common. So that's what that one's doing. This one right here is connected onto the hot surface igniter. So I want you to see when it occurs. You'll hear a click and that's when we're going to be powering our, our hot surface igniter up here. I've turned the lights down and changed the position so you can see the burner. So here we go. We're going to turn the heat on. First you hear this inducer motor turning on. Now you heard a click, and you can see we're sending power to the hot surface igniter. And I see our pilot flame is lit. There's our main burners. And now we see 25.9 volts. So now we're sending our 24 volt power down to the control board. And now we're just waiting for the heat exchanger to warm up, and we're waiting for the blower on delay at the control board to then send power to the blower motor so that that turns on and then pushes the hot air through the building. If you want to learn more about direct ignition systems or pilot ignition systems, flame rectification, gas valves, make sure you check out all the other videos down in the description section below. And make sure you also check out our website. So we have quizzes on, uh, say, gas furnaces and thermostat wiring so you can test your knowledge. And we have a lot more other resources. And we have calculators. We've got quick tips, articles. We also have our air conditioning book there. So make sure you check all that out over at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.